Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm finishing up a little project here I started uh, in a previous video uh, where I'm working on a, it's a machine for cutting threads on pipe. It's a pipe threading machine. And this was sent in by a Leo who works with the Samson Boat Company. Got a YouTube channel over there. Real interesting guy. Real interesting channel. He's restoring a uh, 1910 wooden yacht. A big old wooden boat. And uh, when I say he's restoring it, he's taking it completely down. Replacing a lot of the wood in there. Really fascinating stuff. A lot of uh, old school techniques that really are is, uh, being lost in today's world. And uh, I'm glad to see he's working on this project. He asked me if I'd help him out. What he's got is this piece here. If you didn't see the previous video, it slides on some rails. Uh, this uh, piece here had broken off. We took it, we uh, brazed it back together. And uh, today, these, uh, each of these holes has bronze bushings in it that slide on some rails. Uh, I pressed all the old ones out. They were severely worn and we're replacing all the bronze bushings. So I have um, ordered some brand new bronze bushings. These are inch and an eight on the inside diameter, which is what fits the rails. These fit perfectly on the rails. And uh, what I got to do is turn the outside diameter down to match the boards in here. This is oversized and uh, get all that done over on the metal lathe and then on the press. So let me zoom you in here and kind of show you the process we're going to be using uh, to turn these bronze bushings down and get them fitting just right. So my first step here is I need to determine the size of the bushings. Uh, there's going to be four bushings total. Uh, these are about two inches long each and uh, it'll leave a little gap in between them. We'll put one on each side. So uh, I want to come in here and measure all these bores and just kind of see what they are. So I'm using a, a telescoping gauge. Some people call them a snap gauge. You uh, expand that down in there so it's spring loaded. What did you do is you stick it down in the hole, you leave it at a little bit of an angle, you expand it out, you turn the little knob on the end and uh, it tightens it in place. And then you just kind of pull it forward and it will find that diameter. As it comes back out, it just kind of, it kind of finds that perfect diameter. And then you can use a set of calipers or we're going to use a micrometer here to measure across this and get a measurement. And what I did, I've already done these. I measured them in two or three different places around here. This is an old piece. It's, um, it's, it's, and what I'm finding is they're not perfectly round. They're within a probably a thousandth of one of the measurements, uh, but I'm, I'm measuring these and then I'm adding about a thousandth to that diameter to give me a nice press fit in there, a little bit of an interference fit. I don't want it to be too much that I can't get it in, but I do want that bushing to be just a little bit larger in diameter uh, so that it will stay in place. And uh, we're doing a thousand. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll heat the casting up. We'll freeze these bushings out. We'll expand this out. It'll shrink this. Hopefully they'll press right in. And then whenever the temperature normalizes, it'll just shrink right around it, and everything will be in place. So this is uh, one I've actually already done for 376, which is uh, the diameter on this one. I think I got a 376. This one is a 377. On this side over here, I need a 378 and a 377. So uh, they were all going to need to be within two thousandths of one another, but uh, they are just a little bit different. So to turn my bushings, uh, again, these are the brass bushings that I got. Uh, they're all ready to size on the inside, so I don't have to worry about boring them out. But I do have to turn um, the outside diameter to fit. They're a little bit oversized. Uh, and to do that, we'll do that over on the lathe. Now, work holding on this is the challenge. So uh, what we'll be using is an expanding mandrel. This is uh, basically got two tapers in here. This, this uh, sleeve here uh, will expand as it goes down that outside tapered mandrel. I'll slide that on top of there. And um, I'm just gonna kinda, I'm, I'm on a wooden bench here, so I'm not gonna damage anything, but you'll just kinda tap that down until it tightens up on there. And now it's going in place. You can see that's holding it in place. I'm just going to tap it a few more times. 
so that should be nice and tight. Now, now that I got it on this mandrel, I can turn that, and that should be per turning perfectly true uh, with this mandrel, which this mandrel is ground uh, on centers and has centers in there. So we'll turn this between centers over on the lathe. I've got a dog here, a drive dog, uh, that we'll put on this end. That's just to drive it, and uh, let's go over to the lathe and we'll get this set up. Over here on the lathe, I've got a center in here. This is just the one I chucked into a chuck here. And what I do is, because it's in my three jaw, every time I put it in there, I just freshen that up. I just turn my compound over to 30 degrees and uh, we return this just a little bit to make sure it's running perfectly true with the spindle. Um, and then I will come in here, put that center on this end. We'll put it between centers so we use a live center on the other end you got your drive dog here this is what drives the shaft so as the chuck comes around it engages right there and that's what actually turns that and keeps it from just free spinning so uh, we get that in place and now that uh bronze bushing is turning perfectly true and i can work on that outside diameter and we'll come in here these are inch and a half i got to go to I think this one here, I'm going to 1.377, I think. I go double check that, make sure. Um, so we got plenty to take off. Got about a over 100,000 to take off. So two, four, that would be 60,000 total off the diameter. This bronze tends to want to spray. So uh, I tend to just step out of the way so I don't get covered in the shavings, keep them out of my eyes. Sometimes I wear a face shield when I'm working with bronze because it does want to throw those shavings back at you in your face. All right, I'm gonna have to take that out. I see my, my bushing is actually sliding on there. I need to... Um, expand that mandrel down a little bit more. I'll be right back with it. All right, I tightened that up. That should be fine now. I'm just gonna get a rough measurement here with my calipers. So we're about 450. Yeah, 452, 452. So I'm gonna go ahead and take another 60 off of it. Let me double check my measurement. All right, we're going to go to 378 on this. I got one to make it 378, two at 377. I'm going to do the 378 first. That way, if I miss my mark and uh, go a little bit undersized, hopefully I can still use that 377. Um, I don't have any spares of these, so I got to hit them right on. So we need about... 13 thousandths, 12 thousandths. I'm gonna dial in 10 thou, and then we'll take a light pass and then the last pass. Right on the money, 378. All right, I'm happy with that. I am gonna just kind of come in here, hit the back side of that, just kind of chamfer that a little bit. And I'm gonna change cutters. And we'll break this front edge too. There we go. 
That bushing's done. I've got uh, two more to do. I've got my bushings all turned to size. I got them all marked as to which one's which. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go put these uh, bushings in the freezer and let them get good and cold. And that will shrink them in size a little bit. You know, ideally you'd use something like dry ice. I don't have access to dry ice, not easily where I'm at here. So if I can just put it in the freezer and get them cooled down. And then, like I said, we'll heat this up uh, to expand it out and hopefully they'll press right in without any problem. They probably would press in fine, even just going in at normal temperature, but there's, we can, uh, we can cheat things by heating and cooling a little bit. So that'll be the game plan. Uh, we'll let those sit for an hour or two and uh, see if we can get them pressed in. I've got this set up over here on my Arbor Press to press this. Uh, we're going to start with this bush, and this is the one where we did the braids. If there's one that's not going to line up and press in, it'll be that one, although I think it's going to go in fine. That one needs to be a .377. Uh, I'm about to go grab that out of the freezer, uh, but before I do, just making sure I got my ram here. It's going to go right down, all the way down flush. Before I get it out of the freezer, though, I want to put some heat on this. I'm going to fire my torch up. And putting some heat in there should expand that out and make that hole just a little bit larger. Got my rosebud going here. And we'll just put a little bit of heat in there. Again, we're not trying to get it red hot. Uh, I can just get it a couple of hundred degrees. Probably about 150, 200 degrees. That's really about all I'll need. So uh, shouldn't take a whole lot of heat. I see it's smoking pretty good. That should be good enough. All right, this bushing has been sitting in the freezer for probably an hour or two. And you can see it's just going right in there. All right, once that uh, temperature equalizes, that should be a nice shrink fit. Let's uh, continue on. Let me get set up for the next press. All right, for this next one, I've got some spacers directly underneath this, so I'm pressing straight down onto the plate. And then I just got my jack supporting it in a couple other places around it. Uh, same thing here. This one takes a 378. I'll grab that one out of the freezer, but let's get some heat in this one first. Got a lot of pain on that one. <laughs> Guess we'll be burning some of that off, but that's all right. Leo might want to repaint this before he uh, puts it all back together, or he can just leave that natural patina on there, whatever he wants to do. All right, that's uh, smoking pretty good. Let's grab that bush and... All right, again, we got right out of the freezer. So this thing should be pretty good and cold. And there it goes. Nice press fit. And that'll shrink up nice around there. All right, we'll get it flipped over and we'll press the two in from the other side. I've got this thing again sitting up on some blocks. There's actually a little flange in here so this thing doesn't sit down flat, but I'm pressing straight down onto those blocks and I've got it shimmed up in a couple of other places. So uh, all of our pressure should be going straight down uh, through those blocks and the other positions are just kind of keeping it aligned. So let's get some heat in this one. This one takes a 377 and uh, see if our luck continues. All right, fly some gentle heat here I don't know how gentle it is you know ideally the way you would do this would be if you had a, a big oven in the shop to put it in and just put it in there and put it on a couple hundred degrees maybe 150 200 degrees and let the whole part just heat up nice and evenly uh, but I don't have a oven out here in the shop and unfortunately my wife is home today so I can't sneak in there and use the kitchen or I'd be in deep trouble. Trust me, I know from experience. Not to say that I haven't done that when she's not at home. All right, 
Got some smoke coming out of there. That tells me I'm probably got some good heat in there. Grab my 377. Got my 377 bearing out of the freezer here. All right. Reposition again. Last one, this one takes a 376 and that's the only uh, bearing left in the freezer. So it'll be easy to pick out. Let's get some heat in there. We'll press this last one in place and uh, should have all this part done. And here we go. That one went in real easy. We'll just uh, let this stuff sit over here and equalize in temperature. I'll come back probably about an hour or so and we'll check everything out. While we're waiting on that part to cool down, I want to take a little bit and do a little attention to these shafts that he sent me. I think we're going to be able to salvage them, but there are a couple of little dings on them, a couple of places where set screws have come into it. Uh, I got a little gall right there. I'm just going to start by taking a file. I've got it mounted up over here in the lathe. I'm just going to hit these uh, rough spots. Try to make sure there's nothing sticking up. That was a bad one there. But that one's uh, got it now. Let's see. Got some dings here. thing I'm after here is I just don't want anything sticking up uh, higher than the diameter of the shaft. Obviously there's going to be some dings where it's down lower than the shaft, but I can't really do anything about those. Down here it's just kind of rough. Feels like it's where that um, bushing had worn down and it was actually rubbing on the casting, but um, I think it's going to be all right. I'm going to fire up the lathe now. First, I'm going to turn on the phase converter. Fire up the lathe now. Yeah, it's got a little run out in that end down there. Be all right. It's not really going to matter. I'm just going to start by. Uh, Lightly hitting this with a file. I'm just trying to knock off any high spots. That feels good. Now I've just got some fine emery cloth here. We'll go down here and kind of polish this shaft that a little bit. feels much, much better. Um, we'll try these over there on the, in the bushings in a little bit and make sure it's gonna work fine. But I think that uh, he's gonna be all right reusing those. So let's bring you up where we're at. Um, 
after we let these cool down, I brought this over, put it in my vise, started test fitting the rails. Uh, the one on this side was a little bit tight. It felt like it was binding, and that probably is just where I didn't have this thing perfectly aligned. So to get around that, what I did was I took a reamer, and I just had an adjustable reamer. I got it set on exactly an inch and a quarter, which is the size of that internal bore, and I ran it through there. This reamer's long enough that it's able to engage both of those bearings at the same time, at least partially. And uh, that really kind of helped me get that reamed out where it was nice and straight. And uh, after that, we came over, put our rods in here, and they slide in really well. You can tell there's more wear on this end of the rod. This feels absolutely great down here on the end without any wear. When you get down here, yeah, there's a little bit of wobbling in there, but I can't do anything about that without replacing uh, the rods. I'll leave that up to Leo if he wants to do that. Um, he can just get some stock and cut it. There's no reason, nothing special about it. All right, this one over here, it went a lot smoother. I didn't have to even ream this side. So um, put them in there. The next thing I wanted to do was to make sure, since uh, I knew I had a potential alignment issue over here, I wanted to make sure that these rods were parallel to one another. And to do that, I grabbed my big, long, what are these, 12-inch uh, Sterrett dial calipers. They're not quite long enough to go on the outside, but I was able to measure on the insides of these rods. And let's just do it real quick here. That's measuring 10 inches, 700 and about 70 thou. All right, then I'll come to the front side here measure the same thing and it's reading within a thou or two of the same measurement on both sides. So I'm happy that we've got these parallel and uh, they slide very well. Again, a little bit looser on the ends, nice and tight down here where there's no wear. Um, but I think this thing is done. I think we're ready to box it back up, send it back out to Leo. Now to package it up, and uh, Leo built a great little wooden box that this shipped in. And uh, we're gonna use the box to send it back. Um, I'm not sure that I'm gonna have it in here exactly the same way he sent it to me, uh, because I just can't, can't figure it out exactly, but I got a way that works. So uh, that piece, it's going to go in right like that. This piece is going to go in like that. And we're going to screw it all together. He had holes marked for where the screws were, but they're going to be a little bit different place. He can figure it out, I'm sure. That's not going to move around. I think that's going to be just fine. That's not moving at all. So he had his thing stuffed with uh, paper. So we'll do the same thing going back. a couple of vintage machinery stickers in here too. Maybe they'll survive the journey.
got the mailing stickers on the other side. Since we're going to need new mailing stickers, we'll flip it over for the term trip. Have a nice clean top here. ready to go back. <laughs> now the rails were packaged up separately and uh, he had them just in a box. I think I'm gonna wrap these with some paper just because I don't want them to get damaged. Wrap some tape around these. up in this box really good. Let's see here. seam up right here just because I can what the heck we'll just go all the way around it all right I think that will make it back I think we got everything done I think we got everything packed up uh, Leo's gonna send me some shipping labels to put on these to get them sent back his way and he should have these parts back uh, toward the end of the week and be uh, back in business. So, uh, Leo, good luck with your uh, restoration project on both your threader as well as on the tally-ho. I've been watching that restoration myself and uh, anxious to see you get that thing in the water and, and get her on a trip somewhere. That'll be fun to watch. Uh, if you haven't, again, go check out Samson Boat Company. Uh, really interesting stuff over there uh, on YouTube. Guys, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, comments and thumbs up are appreciated. Guys, we'll talk to you next time around.